thank you for talking to KFC TV again this morning, I appreciate that. No um, what pleased you about last week's game at Aberdeen? Obviously what we talked about at half time, I was looking for a response from the players because I just felt we um, we played with a, a little bit of fear, stroke, too much respect for our opponents. You know, how you show teams respect is by the work that you do through the week with them. Um, you know, myself and my staff watch footage, get match reports, we deliver what we see from those match reports on the team in terms of the the opposition as a team and, and certain individuals so we work along those lines through the week and that's you showing the respect once you step over the white line it's 11 v 11 and you haven't got nothing to fear and when we done that in the second half we showed that we were more than a match for a very good Aberdeen team and uh, by the end of the game felt we should have came away with something from the game a positive result at least and um, created chances got back into the game quite quickly after half time had other opportunities for us to go ahead and then um, we obviously conceded but we still kept kept going um, so just felt that we'd, we'd wasted the first half of the game really in terms of um, you know not, not, not doing what we'd stuck to and having a game plan you know and having a game plan that you use when you haven't got the ball but when you've got the ball go and play them with freedom and, and go and cause the opposition problems you know which we just felt in every aspect of the game, even though it was late in the first half when Aberdeen scored the, the, the first goal, um, we just felt that we, in all aspects, were a little bit timid in, in what we were doing when we were pressing, when we were tackling, with our passing, we, we didn't have any attempts at goal, we weren't penetrating. So, obviously in the second half, all those things we done and we looked like we, we could get a result and I felt we deserved it after that. Yeah, the second half was definitely better than the first half. When you joined the club, you commented on the, the fitness levels of, of the players. How do you see that now? I think they're improving dramatically. I think uh, I've got some data from our double session on Tuesday, which shows from our first double session when I took over the marked improvement in individuals, but as more importantly as a group, the distances we're, we're covering, the recovery time of the players, still not at where I want to be ultimately, um, once I get my own squad together but certainly you know we are still going 93 94 minutes we're not uh, you know blown up after 60 or 70 minutes mm -hmm. um, certainly as a group so the players are responding to that the work ethic uh, as I said the date and the stats that we that we have shows that there's been a, a, a huge improvement in each individual on the fitness side but as I said more importantly on, on the squad um, but we'll be striving to, to continue that from now till the end of the season because you know the way I want to play and I believe the fit that you are in any way no matter what type of football team you are it uh, can only help you get positive results. Absolutely, I mean, I mean you've, you've changed the, the training regime as in times of training to suit the games that are coming up is that something you experienced before and, and it worked for you? And I've experienced it before and it's worked for myself um, it's one of the first opportunities I've really had to do it as a manager because it's all about facilities. You know, when you're training later on in the afternoon or at night, for instance, in midweek games, you do need floodlights. And we're in the process of doing that at Birmingham as part of our uh, EPPP process, which was the academy, which is one of the city, one of the scenarios you need to have flood floodlit area. Um, I hadn't come to fruition by the time I'd left, so it was always in my mind to do this. It was always in my mind that it had worked uh, very successfully for myself. I've seen other top managers around Europe using this format to great success. So it's just—it's not me trying to reinvent the wheel. It's just me trying to to trying to get that edge to try and get the fine margins in our favour. And it's just quite simple, really. If you're going out on a Saturday at three o'clock, why train your body to be at its most peak condition at 10.30 till midday, and then at three o'clock, usually most young footballers are probably having a nap or playing on the PlayStation. So in, those, uh, in, in that type of format, it's quite simple why I'm doing it. It's not, I'm, you know, I'm not pushing myself out there as being, you know, Lee Clark, the new, you know, trying to uh, reinvent the coaching wheel, that's, that's not what I'm trying to do, it's just trying to 
give the players that little bit of edge and to try and get their body clocks in tune with what we're expected on a match day. Yeah. Um, we've seen to lose goal at set pieces um, recently against Rangers and Aberdeen, obviously. Why do you not put players on the post for corners? Is this something that you think is not necessary? No, we do. We do have, we certainly have a player on the far post. Uh, the man who is in the uh, front post area to stop the under hit corner, once that ball goes over his head, his secondary job is to drop onto the post. Um, so that's, you know, players taking the information on board. Um, our goal against Aberdeen wasn't caused by a player not being on the post, it was by us not being touch tight from the first instance, getting their biggest player, allowing him to have a free run on goal. You know, I can accept because we're not the biggest team, to be honest, we're not the biggest squad, so we do have a, a height indifference in set players. But if you're competing, you know, even if you're a smaller player and you're competing with someone who has three or four inches on you, <clears throat> if you don't give them a free header, you can actually put them off so they don't get a clean header to head it in on goal. That's the difference. You know, I can accept players getting beat by somebody in the air because they're actually a smaller player than their opponent. That's not, there's nothing you can do about that if we're, we have to just hold our hand up and say we're a smaller team. But what you can do is be touch tight from the first instance and be prepared to put a, put a challenge in that doesn't allow your opponent a free header. So he's not, he's, one, he's not winning the ball freely, but two, he's not being able to direct it where he wants. Um, there was a good example at the weekend in, uh, in Man United's cup tie against West Ham when um, <coughs> Swain Stegar ended up marking Sacco, who had a few inches on him, but Swain Stegar uh, jumped with Sacco, and as Sacco headed the ball, it, it hit the top of Swain Stegar's head and went over the crossbar. So that showed you that a smaller player can still affect what's happening. And when players are given jobs, they have to be taking that responsibility. And um, so obviously the first the first goal against Aberdeen, um, the the winner against Rangers. Is players who've been given specific jobs <coughs> and detailed jobs, um, and and not um, and, and and not following that following that through. The modern day player thinks sometimes that if they're marking space, they're, they're, they're stopping their opponent. But it's actually if a man's got a run on you and he's an attacking a moving ball, it's very difficult if you are stand yeah. from a standing position. So it's obviously something that we 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 we've stressed to the players. We, we keep showing them. Uh, they have to take that uh, on board. But it, in terms of your question about the post, we do have those areas covered in terms of, as I said, the front man in the, we call it the hole, who stops the under hip one. If it is a, a, a corner that comes over his head, he quickly spins and gets onto the near, uh, the near post and we all already have a player on the far post. Okay. Um, at previous meetings you mentioned about changes within the club and the dressing room. Um, what sort of changes were you talking about and have you managed to implement them? Yeah. Uh, one or two little things in terms of um, um, a, a schedule board um, with the Kilmarnock logo on that, you know, just makes you feel like you're coming into something that uh, is important to the to the people, important to the club, um, you know, all our tactics boards, you know, having the, the club emblem and crest on it. Um, you know, uh, tactics boards for me and the staff that uh, give us uh, a rundown on, on every specific area of the club, loans in and out, suspended players, players on internationals, injured players, uh, development uh, group, etc. Um, uh, you know, uh, action pictures of the players uh, uh, around their, their seating area and the dressing room, you know, inspirational ones, maybe say for an, a striker, a Josh McGuinness or a Chris Boyd, them, them, an action picture of them scoring a goal or celebrating a goal, a positive moment mm -hmm. uh, while they're playing. Um, the corridor leading to uh, the away team dressing room, uh, which isn't completed, with, you know, we're in the process of doing been completely revamped, uh, painted, and then wall, uh, ceiling to floor pictures of uh, uh, players who've come through the youth system at this football club and gone on and had terrific careers. The near Stephen Near Smiths mm -hmm. of this world, etc., with inspirational quotes. So there, there's inspiration for the young players in the development uh, mm -hmm. group already. 
but also the players that are already here and we have some young players in the squad. The corridor leading run by my office uh, from the main entrance of uh, action pictures of, of the current squad and of past uh, success stories of the club, um, you know, cup finals, etc. Um, um, with inspirational quotes from uh, not just football people, uh, sports people who've been successful, Muhammad Ali, uh, Michael Jordan, mm -hmm. um, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is a process that we are that I'm. I wanted, you know, I want to try and do ASAP, but there's so much that I want to do to to the surroundings of the football club um, off the field to enable us to become better which is ultimately the goal on the field. So th those processes are in place. Bits and little bits and bobs of it have, have arrived and we've started to put them into practice. Um, other bits will take a little bit longer, but you know, um, certainly come my first day of pre-season, everything that I want in terms of those type of things will be in place. Um, so we can you know, push and change the mentality of the football club and change the mentality of uh, people who work in here, people and change the mentality of current staff and current and players who will still be here next season. That mm -hmm. we're not happy to be in this position every season. We're not happy to having to change the, the manager on a regular basis. Um, we're not happy that uh, the product on the pitch is an enticing more supporter. So all these things are what I'm trying to enable us to 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 get to to achieve and the ultimate goal is to is to have the product on the pitch that attracts more people through the terraces. Excellent. Got a tough game tomorrow. How do you see it? Exactly that. It's been a tough opening period for us when I decided and spoke with the board about taking the job. I knew the first few weeks were Going to be extremely tough in terms of the fixtures. The fixture list didn't wasn't kind to me personally, yeah. but with the exception of Ross County, I've been pleased with a lot of aspects of each game. I believe I don't go into tomorrow with fear. I go in with great um, anticipation. Games I loved. I, I've, the re, one of the reasons I came to to be uh, up in Scotland was to play these games and be involved. And one of the main reasons why it's crucial that we stay in the top level of the game because potentially there could be two more of the bigger clubs in Scotland mm -hmm. joining the league again. Looks like Rangers have done it, I know Falkirk and you know other teams will have a say in what Hibs do but if those two come up you know the, the league gets its wow factor back again yeah. so you want to be a part of that. And like I said against Aberdeen we've we have continually, since Aberdeen game passed and we quickly debriefed it on Monday morning, we then set our sights on Celtic in a process of having match reports, watching footage, detailed footage, uh, which we've worked on this week with the players. So that's me and my staff and then giving it to the players. That's us showing the respect for our opponents, putting a game plan together. But ultimately tomorrow, when the players go out, they have to play um, 11 v 11 and have to play, they don't play the badge, they don't play the, the, the name on the front, they play the, the, you know, the name on the back, yeah. that's who they're playing against and they have to, uh, they have to, you know, they've had positive results and positive performances against the so-called bigger teams in the league already this season on many occasions and uh, they have to continue with that but obviously points are imperative, what we have to do is you know, we've got three left. By the time those three games are finished before the split, the points uh, between us and the teams above us has to be reduced. So when we go into those five World Cup finals, stroke Champions League finals, because that's what they are, mm -hmm. uh, we have, we have. if we go and do the business in those games, our destiny is in our own hands. Any players coming in before the end of the season? It's difficult, we're looking continuously, we've had a revolving door in terms of players coming in to look at who are out of contract. I can't just sign those players on past reputation because they're out of contract and they haven't played for such a long time for whatever reason. Maybe some of them have had long term injuries, mm -hmm. couldn't find a club etc etc. Uh, are their fitness levels up to what we need straight away? I think what you've seen with four bare yards 
quality to the class to the squad. I thought he was outstanding at Aberdeen last week. A mm -hmm. uh, very experienced player. So if there's someone like that available who I know that can get fit uh, with playing games very, very quickly um, and has the experience, we will try and do something. But at this moment in time, we've just felt that the players who've come in couldn't do that to us. It would it just been me the case of just signing bodies, which is not what I want. The, court, the squad needs to be reduced in any way to be leaner. Eventually, we need to have a leaner squad with the emphasis on quality and not quantity because we have so many good young players I can um, you know subsidize the numbers in the squad with those youngsters who work so it doesn't stop their development as well as long as we have a, a basis of 14 15 senior players who have top-notch quality you know you're, you, you the, the, the saying in the game is the quality of what you have is about how you what you have on the bench that's how you judge your quality not your starting 11 because a starting eleven can pick up injuries, suspensions, etc. It's how you can, and how do you change a game if you're a goal behind? Mm -hmm. How do you keep the result in your favour if you've got if you've got a one goal lead or a two goal lead? And these are all the things that we need to be addressing and um, come the close season. So, it, I would love to make additions, but it's it's proved difficult and it's proved difficult because of different reasons. Where do you think we need to strengthen? Where? Yeah. Well, I mean, in, in an ideal world, we have an unbalanced squad. We have, um, we, we, you know, it, it, when you're working at first team level, you should always be having four senior centre backs and four senior strikers, because centre backs need to be dominant against the opposition strikers, and your strikers need to be dominant against their centre halves, and you need to have a, a variation of strikers. Mm -hmm. You need to have a big in who can, you know who can be a target for you to, to, to for crosses to, to win those headers uh, and then uh, possibly a smaller one who's quick. Obviously they all have to have some kind of goal, goal scoring pedigree. You don't bring strikers in who don't do what their responsibility is, is to score so they have to have that and they have to be able to play um, you know in a, in a two and as a, as a lone striker off the don't play as a lone striker when you play the 4-2-3-1 system have the, the speed to then go and play as a wide man mm. you know we seem to have a dearth of players who want to play in the number 10 role at the moment but we don't have a lot of cover in wide areas we don't have enough out and out strikers mm -hmm. uh, so I would say you know the, the squad can be uh, looked at in terms of all areas of the pitch that can be strengthened and for me um, my going forward in the transfer windows that we work in would be looking at um, the market down south hugely um, in terms of permanent signings but also going to the big clubs where I have good contacts to get uh, at least window to window loans and mm -hmm. season long loans it's worked for Glasgow Rangers you know you have the athleticism at and the power and the pace. That's not to say I will be uh, not contemplating um, looking at Scottish players because there is quality there and there's certainly players who I would like to bring to the football club that I've already identified from other Scottish clubs. Uh, we've made the, we've 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 started the process on two or three of those already with regards to the summer uh, recruitment. So it's it's getting a good balance. Great. Tomorrow tough game without giving anything away. What can we expect from Kilmarnock tomorrow? We can ex we expect that from the 94-95 minutes we play with no fear, we're committed, we understand what's at stake, it's an 11 v 11, we're playing a fantastic football club and institution, they'll have a tremendous uh, crowd, we'll get good numbers turning out for us, we've got, we've got uh, no, nothing to fear, Lots of, we respect them immensely but no fear and we we'll take the game to them. We'll have a strong game plan when we haven't got the ball, which we have to stick to, you know, rigidly. But when we play, when we win the ball back, we have to have good ball retention. We have to have uh, people expressing themselves and play with freedom, because we want to win the game. And ultimately, to win the game, you need to score goals. So <clears throat> when we done that last week, we created chances. We did score, um, and, and in the games, you know, in the main hearts, uh, Dundee. We, we have created chances in there. Ross County, we 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 were a bit we were disappointed with our general performance that evening. So 
on the whole, we need to certainly continue where we left off last Saturday and, and, and in that vein. And, you know, there's pressure on us, of course, because of our position, but there's also pressure on Celtic because of their position and the expectation that comes with playing with it's, it's such a huge club. And for the first time in many years, they have someone breathing right down their neck, so we have to use that to our advantage. Great. Thanks very much for talking to no us. Problem. On the Finally, a message for the fans for tomorrow. Just keep your support going. I've been hugely impressed with the back in that uh, the supporters have given the players and myself. We understand that there's been tough times uh, in the past. We're hoping to change that uh, very, very quickly. The first and foremost thing is to keep this proud club uh, in, in the highest level of the Scottish game so then we can make our changes count in the summer and, and push on from there. Thanks again.